this meeting this meeting is being recorded. Uh, thanks so much. It definitely it definitely is. It was it's already on Facebook and it will live there uh, in infamy uh, forever. So uh, that was uh, not in infamy, but that was really beautiful, Luis and uh, Malachi. Thank you so much. I want to uh, just let everybody know that we're going to be here. Uh, every night, Monday, Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. live on Facebook, uh, just like we have been for the last several nights. We, we, we had a weird schedule the, last, the past couple nights, but 8 o'clock for the next four nights. And uh, this uh, this candle lighting has, is, a, is a joint effort of the Cantor's Assembly and the Rabbinical Assembly. So I want to thank, thank you all on behalf of both organizations for joining us. If you if you like what you heard tonight, which I, I, I sincerely hope you do, I don't know how you couldn't because it was so it was so uh, so beautiful. But um, please uh, comment on the Facebook page. Please like the Facebook page, and that way you'll get a, a, a notification as soon as we go live. Now we are going to um, we are going to be going right into our uh, our next program, which is. Uh, I don't want to say it's the main event of the evening, but for many of you joining us now, it is the main event because you didn't know we were going to do candle lighting. But the, the main the main program this evening is a retrospective of the life and work of Chazan Moshe Taube, who who unfortunately passed away about a month ago. Uh, I believe his shloshim was uh, was completed uh, maybe this past Thursday, I think, either Wednesday or Thursday, and we wanted to wait until the end so that we could play some some wonderful wonderful recordings of him we've got a, a tremendous um tremendous evening planned for you which should run approximately one hour although at the end of it once we officially end the program there's going to be i don't, I don't want to call it an after party but we're going to have a little bit of extra recordings uh, of an interview that he did for from a um, a book called chosen voices written by dr mark slobin uh, who did extensive interviews with uh, many, many Chazanim, and we are very fortunate that we have an extended section of interviews that we're going to be able to play for you uh, at the end for those of you who want to hang around and hear that. But right now, we're going to, before the program begins, we're going to listen to a recording of Ashrei from the Slichot service that uh, was recorded. Uh, I don't know exactly when it was recorded. Robert, when you uh, join in, you can uh, maybe let us know a little bit more about what we're hearing. I think it was 1969. There you go. But I'm not sure. All right, let's uh, let's hear the recording. <laughs>
everyone for joining us and welcome to this retrospective of the life and work of Chazan Moshe Taube. I want to give you, my name is Mike Weiss. I'm the uh, Chazan of the Highland Park Conservative Temple in, in Highland Park, New Jersey. And I am also the Director of Communications for the Cantor's Assembly. And I want to welcome you all to this program. Before I turn the, uh, before I turn things over to uh, Chazan Robert Kival, who is our de facto host for the evening, I want to give you an overview of what you're going to hear tonight. Uh, we are going to begin with uh, an excerpt from an interview that uh, Hazan Taube gave for, that I, I referred to earlier uh, for the book uh, Chosen Voices by Dr. Mark Slopin. We're going to hear a few minutes of that, and then we're going to go right into um, several musical pieces uh, sung by Hazan Taube. After that, we're going to hear from uh, his clergy partner, Rabbi Stephen Steindel. Uh, we're going to hear from Lauren Bairn's father, the, who is the executive director of the Holocaust Center of Pittsburgh, where Cantor Taubay was extremely involved. And we're also going to uh, hear his, uh, his Shoah survivor testimony from the USC Shoah Foundation that's going to be presented by, by Freddie Kotek, who is a member of the board of counselors of the USC uh, Shoah Foundation. And then we're going to complete the program with uh, recollection uh, and uh, chanting of the El Mali Rachamim by Chazan Stephen Storr of uh, Congregation Beth Shalom in Northbrook, Illinois. He was a student of, of Cantor Taube and knew him very well. Um, so that's, that's the overview. And uh, Robert, why don't, you, uh, why don't you take it away? OK. Um, I knew Chazan Taube. And uh, had great respect for him. He spent uh, over 40 years in Pittsburgh, uh, but you will hear the historical background. The only thing that I wanted to say in the beginning was that uh, he had a he had a very very um, colorful life, both in Europe and in Israel and in America. Um, he spent his years mostly in Pittsburgh, which was very interesting because he was one of the really most talented Chazanim of our generation. And um, you will hear that in the cuts that we are going to play for you. Um, we are going to put up a, uh, a uh, slide with some biographical data. And while that slide is up for you to read, we are going to play a recording from 1969, a live davening, um, where he is singing the Chatzik Kaddish before Musaf. Actually, it was probably the Chatzik Kaddish at Slichot. Um, and then uh, we are going to listen to some um, recordings that uh, were from his early career when he came to America, and, and then some recordings when he first came to Pittsburgh, and then some recordings from his later days in Pittsburgh. So let's now listen to the Hatsi Kaddish for the High Holidays, as you can read some of his biographical data. <laughs>
Now we are going to hear a short cut from the beginning of his interview with Dr. Mark Sloban, uh, where he talks about his early childhood. And then we will go to the, uh, the musical portion. Uh, let's start by, um, from the beginning. How did you right. get into this business, so to speak? How did you... Uh... Well... First of all, I come from a family where music, and especially cantorial Jewish music, cantorial music, played a very considerable role in family life and in uh, generally in in uh, not only as an entertainment, not only as a spiritual uplifting, but also professionally. My father was uh, singing in his childhood with a very uh, famous cantor in town of Przemysl. And later oh, on, Przemysl, yes, yeah. in Krakow, in, uh, in Poland. Mm -hmm. And later on, he himself officiated. So I, I would say I inherited the love for Hazanut and the understanding, perhaps, for Hazanut uh, from my father. So did you sing as a child then? I sang as a child when I was eight years old with one of the uh, foremost Krakow cantors. Uh -huh. Who was that? Uh, Jocelyn Mandelbaum. Uh -huh. He's still... Living, he's in. Really? Uh, yes, he is in. He's a man up in years, of course. He is in um, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. He was in the Svadik Shul in Brooklyn, a cantor for about thirty years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now he is retired, of course. And occasionally, he sings at the Bobeva Oh, so really? He's a Bobeva Hasid, yes. But most my my I would say my infrastructure of Hazanut I I got from him, and. Uh, was he Hasidically incarnate? No, he, no, no you would be surprised to know that he officiated in a synagogue, in a Krakow synagogue, a famous Krakow synagogue, the Cyp Cyprus Shul, Cyprus Shul, mm -hmm. which was not a Hasidic Shul at all. It was a very, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, advanced, progressive Shul. And he himself was only a Hasid, but having such a beautiful voice and having a tremendous uh, Hazanic potential in, in his presentations and everything. He was accepted there as, as a Hazan, and I had the privilege to sing in his choir mm. at the time. And uh, I was I, Im, I was imbued in it, and, and I absorbed very much of it. Unfortunately, the Second, second World War interrupted of course. everything. And uh, I was as, a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I was also studying in a conservatory in Krakow. Mm -hmm. General music, piano, yeah. 
yeah. and to enjoy the music as a child. See, in the afternoon, because the school, the the ele- elementary school was till one o'clock. So in the afternoon, I uh, studied for two, three, three hours in this conservatory of Krakow. I was just yes. talking to uh, Cantor Goodfriend earlier about his experience yes. Yes. in Poland. Yes. Uh, he came through the Hasidic side. Yes. Yes. Now, what were the musical differences? Let's say the service as performed for the Vega as were as performed, you know, in, in the synagogue in Krakow. Yes. What kinds of musical differences? First of all, the musical differences would be in the service itself. Mm-hmm. And service itself, the service would be on a higher musical plane and more uh, characteristic by using the prayer modes in the synagogue mm-hmm. that in, uh, the Reb- in the Rebbe's court. Mm-hmm. In the Rebbe's court, you use uh, military marches, you use uh, all kinds of uh, uh, songs without words on Yamba Bam right. Bam, right. uh, you know, and... and uh, even for uh, Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur? Even for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, mm-hmm. they, were, they were niguni, you see? Right. Whereas in the synagogue, there was Nusach, there was... Nusach. Uh, the, uh, what the Germans call the four track, yes. the, the presentation, the the. the uh, but how about the chanting of a very specific? I mean, the the, the music for a very specific uh, item. Right. Uh, if you had the same item being sung by two people, how would you tell that they, one came from a Hasidic background? Yes. For example, let's say uh, on high holidays. Yeah. Uh, say Ato Nigleso, okay. a a, a, a uh, in other words, a. a uh, liturgical piece like Atani Glaiso. This would be sung in a synagogue mm-hmm. in a completely different manner. It would be sung in a Nusach in a uh, uh, Mixolydian mode mm-hmm. with, uh, of course, embellishments and coloratura and, mm-hmm. and modulations and uh, different other things uh, uh, with, uh, of course, uh, individual feelings and, and yeah. individual, project, individual projection, but on a music, more musical level, on more, mm-hmm. I would say, more dignified, more uh, choral style level, mm-hmm. with the choir and so on. Whereas at the Hasidic rabbi, the, um, the rabbi, the, the, the people would join in a, in a zemmer. Uh-huh. For even for the same even for, that for the same of the yeah. so there would be a, something, a zemmer perhaps, or, or, or a uh, race, uh, in the Hasid, at the Hasidic rabbi school, there were there were certain inflections of of uh, dvekus, of of mm-hmm. Uh, mm, mm-hmm. tremendous enthusiasm, right. ecstasy, right. Hasidic ecstasy, which did not appear or did not have any place in the synagogue. Right. Right. You understand? For example, the the crying, you know, uh, say the crying um, at, at a unsane uh, tokev, right. the tremendous. Uh, uh, intensity. Was intensity of yeah. prayer, yeah. which did not exist in a in a shul, right. of course, it was done with feeling and with, with tremendous uh, outpouring of soul and mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. And women were crying in the, in the gallery tremendously. Yes, of course, but it was done differently at the, 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 the Hasidic right. court, where you uh, where you did not see women at all. Mm-hmm. Now, when you were um, uh, did you actually function as a kind of mishoever? <coughs> yes. Uh, yes. Did you? Did they give you any musical training themselves, or did you get that in the conservatory? I did, I did get it at conservatory. So the the, the cousin did the not cousin sit down not, with no, you. No, no. Uh, we the, we were trained to sing by ear. It was all by ear. Yes. Yes. At that particular point. Okay. I want you to know that all of that noise that you heard in the beginning. It's not from me eating my dinner, but uh, but from the where the uh, original interview was done. It was done in the room, one of the rooms at at uh, Grossinger's Hotel, I believe, and they were probably uh, doing something out in the street, and it was not a very soundproof room, so. Whenever we play anything from the interviews, that's you're going to hear some background noise. And at one point, if you wait long enough and hear the interviews at, towards the end, you will hear somebody vocalizing down the hall. So it was probably done in a in, in a room when they interviewed him. 
The next two numbers, Zara Chayo, which is from Yakum Porkan, which is uh, just uh, after we finish the Haftarah on Shabbat, is a prayer for the, uh, the congregation. Uh, and the second number is uh, a hafti, and you will hear that that he he say he says in his later part of the interview that he was very very influenced by Leib Glantz uh, because he came to uh, Israel right after the war, um, uh, Taube did. And um, and Glantz came to Israel in 1954, and and uh, Talbe was very very influenced by Glantz's idea of Chazanut and his approach to Chazanut, and in the Ahavti you will hear that. Okay, let's listen to the Zara Chayo now. This recording was made in 1961. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
just heard Zaro Chayo Vekayo. Okay, that was uh, Alberto Mizrahi speaking. <laughs> um, I just uh, wanted you to know that if you go into the chat, you will find the obituary from the uh, Pittsburgh Gazette which uh, gives a very nice outline of his career and his life. So if you want to read that, you're welcome to. And now we're going to hear Ahafti, which is from the same period. It's on the, it was on the same recording. And um, those of you that are familiar with Glantz will be able to hear the influence that Glantz had on on the Chazanut of uh, Moshe Talbe. And I see that uh, Jerry Glantz has been, is on with us tonight. That's, uh, that's Leib Glantz's son. So I'm sure that he will be able to see that, that there was an influence, that gl a very strong influence that Glantz had on Talbe.
The next piece that we're going to hear is uh, from when uh, Hazen Talbe came to um, Pittsburgh and formed his own male choir there to daven with him. And they were quite good. Uh, he was an unusually talented musician and all of the choral arrangements are all done by him, as are most of the compositions that he sang. Um, this is a very, very lovely kiddush, which in the in the uh, middle, uh, it's for Pesach, and um, he utilizes a tune for Kivanu Vacharta, which was from one of the verses of Tal, sung by uh, Yossel Rosenblatt. Let's go.
Uh, now we're going to listen to uh, a live davening from 1969 at Beth Shalom in Pittsburgh. And it is a recording of the great Alenu. Um, we wanted to put something in from the high holidays. And um, this was typical of uh, Hazen Taube's elegant arrangement of a traditional Mycenae tune. This is, this is a version of Tikanto Shabbos, his original composition with choir that um, was a beautiful, beautiful interpretation of the text. Very interesting. Uh, when you listen to these things, look at the English translation and see how he utilizes what they call in Chazanut, word painting, how he musically interprets the text. Beautiful, beautiful interpretations.
This next number is a piece that he did f from a Friday night service written by Jerry Kopmar, who had a famous children's choir. And you'll see that even with the children's choir, he is able to do artistic things in his part and meld it with the rest of the composition. Let's go, Joel.
Our last number is Sin Shalom. Um, those of you that are going to wait to hear the rest of the interview material will find that he talks about his how he arranged congregational melodies. And he wrote most of his own congregational melodies, which he taught to the congregation. And this is a typical example of that. Very elegant melody, very elegant chazanut in the, in the piece also. And he was obviously very cognizant of the congregation singing along and participating, but participating on an elegant level.
And now that we have heard the great musical and chazanic interpretations of Chazan Moshe Taubay, we will hear some tributes. The first is from Rabbi Stephen Steindel, who was his rabbi for many years at Beth Shalom. And uh, incidentally, Rabbi Steindel's father was one of my first rabbis when I was chazan in New York. It's a very small Jewish world out there. Rabbi Steindel, are you there with us? Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. Anyone here at Beth Shalom has to have been inspired by these beautiful pieces one after another being reminded of the power and the passion that Moshe Taube brought to Beth Shalom as he did anywhere he sang. I was privileged to be on the bimbo with him almost half of his 40 years at Beth Shalom. It wasn't always easy. He was an artist and a perfectionist. And what he expected of the service didn't always match what everyone else might have been looking for. I can clearly say that for decades, members of Beth Shalom in Pittsburgh entered the shul on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to find ushers they recognized, clergy who knew them and their families, the same Silverman Machser beneath their seats, and the voice up front that carried their prayers to the throne of God. That's what the high holy days were at Beth Shalom. I had a unique perspective, some might say. Rabbi and Cantor share clergy in title. My unique perspective meant that I knew a little bit more than the congregation what might be coming. Not always a lot more, a little bit more or I could pick up without singing because I was told by the choir director not to sing into the microphone. <laughs> it threw them off. They needed to be on his key. But the way we were set on the bima meant that I stood at my umud and looked across at the cantor's umud and then the choir above him. I got to see what most of the congregation didn't because he faced to the Arona Kodesh for an overwhelming percentage of the service. Almost every piece you've heard here tonight would have been sung with his back to the congregation, unless it was in a concert setting, but most of those were not. He was facing the ark and I could see his face, his body. I could even see his arms. I knew that they were carrying those prayers. I knew that he was using his arms as a signal to the choir and an attribute from a member of the choir at our service at Beth Shalom at the conclusion of Shiva. I heard for the first time that when he went thumbs up, it meant they had done their job. They had kept the key. They had come through for him. That was a very important element for Kantor Talbe. The beautiful Pesach, High Holy uh, Kiddush, 
became uniform around the year. One of his favorite phrases was throw in the towel. And I believe he did, taking that exact melody into the Shalosh Wigalim Kiddush prayers. Another, whenever I might ask something, when I wanted to prepare something, when I hoped we might organize the time or predict what's coming, he would say, let's play it by ear. Now I knew with a man of that artistry and that skill, I wasn't equal to him in playing it by ear. I knew it was his way of saying, I've heard what you said, leave it to me. You'll get the result you want or as close to the result you want as I'm about to provide. Play it by ear. We're not gonna sign any documents here. When my family was much, much younger, Lisa would sit in the same place so that the children who ran around school could always know where their mother was. I was on the Bima, they couldn't approach me. They know where mom was. Avi was our youngest and our only son. He was most often side by side with Lisa. And he would ask as a young child, as the davening surrounded him, mommy, why is Cantor crying? And in tonight's numbers, we could hear from Ahavti to Alenu to almost every piece of Sim Shalom. We could hear what sounded like a voice crying. That cry, powerful and passionate, was Moshe Taube's pathway to heaven. He carried us with him. He made the prayers spiritual and personal. It is now more than 10 years since his voice graced our Bima. But I know every one of our members who is privileged to be on tonight, thanks you and thanks the Cantor's Assembly for bringing us his voice, his history, and his role in keeping Judaism alive. There's a great Mibra somewhere in Pirkei de Rebiel, that when God brought the Jews back from exile, from all the suffering and all the pain and all the anguish they had suffered, it came with a voice, the voice of hope, the voice of faith, the voice of return. Moshe Taube was that voice in our shul and in our day. Thank you so much, Rabbi, for those inspiring words. We are now going to move into a different mode, if you will. Uh, it's an appropriate choice of words for, uh, for talking about a cantor. But uh, Chazan Taube was, was not just a great Chazan. There's another aspect of his life that, uh, that we want to explore as well uh, for the next couple of speakers. And that is uh, his history as a survivor of the Shoah. We are going to now hear from uh, Lauren Barron's father, who is the executive director of the Holocaust Center of Pittsburgh. And uh, hopefully she is uh, getting the uh, message to unmute. There she is. Okay, Lauren, it's your, please, please uh, share some things with us. Thank you. I should have done this since that was the message that everything was fine. Um, I, I am honored to be part of this beautiful program um, to honor a cantorial and a local legend here in Pittsburgh, um, Cantor Moshe Taube, um, on the fourth night of Hag Hanukkah. Um, what a gift to hear Cantor Taube's soaring voice and a blessing that this program has been recorded so that others will be able to listen as we did tonight I know many of you who are listening to the program and watching the program um, heard Cantor Taube sing often. Um, I heard him sing every year at our Yom HaShoah program, and that's only for the past five years. It was not enough. Um, it was not enough. Someone commented that the Cantor sang from his heart. 
um, and his heart was in his eyes. Without a word, his eyes told his story of surviving the Shoah as part of Schindler's List and the way that his, survivor, his survival, when others were lost, tormented him. Um, he lived with that. Uh, but this is not to say that he did not get into mischief, especially with his good friend Judah Samet. If they were sitting together at a program for the Holocaust Center, you knew that they would be getting into you know, some innocent kind of mischief. Um, and we looked forward to that. We really looked forward to that. Um, with Cantor Taube and with his style and majestic voice, which I really felt so moved to hear tonight, we've lost a connection to that lost world of European Jewry. He really represented something and we won't be the same without him. So it is upon us now to remember and to keep that memory alive. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. We are now going to uh, hear a, or see, we're going to see a selection from the survivor testimony recorded by the USC Shoah Foundation of Chazan Taube. And it's going to be introduced by Freddie Kotek, who is a member of the Board of Counselors of the USC Shoah Foundation, and uh, I hope he's here now, ready to go. Well, here, Mike, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Great. So, uh, happy Hanukkah to all as well, and uh, to follow presentation a little here. Uh, I'm pleased uh, to be with you here today to honor the legacy of Hazan Moshe Taube. Um, Hazan Taube's testimony is one of 55,000 testimonies that are now housed at the USC Shoah Foundation's Visual History Archive. It's a digital monument to the memory of those we lost in the Shoah, and it's a testament to the survival and the resilience uh, of those who survived. Now, I'm a member of the uh, Next Generation Council of the USC Shoah Foundation, and it's my personal commitment that the lessons of, and the commitment of the organization, that the lessons of the Shoah um, that uh, have been documented in the Visual History Archive are used for beneficial purposes, to avoid future atrocities through education, and to provide a meaningful legacy to all the victims, those who perished and those who survived. And on a personal note, um, to, it, it's my personal real honor to, to honor the memory of such a great man on this day, because the third day of Hanukkah, which we just completed, happens to be uh, my own mother's 56th yurt site, and she was an Auschwitz survivor. Uh, both my parents are survivors and my in-laws are survivors, were survivors, and uh, so it's particularly meaningful uh, that I'm blessed to have the uh, this honor to pay a tribute to her memory at the same time uh, and, and honor her as we're honoring uh, Moshe Ta Taube. Now, um, a, br a brief history of the clip you're about to see. Uh, Moshe Taube sat down with the USC Shoah Foundation's volunteer named David Brodsky in Pittsburgh on March 7th, 1996, so almost 25 years ago. And for over three hours, he recounted his story from his earliest childhood memories in Krakow, which we saw on the first screen at the beginning of tonight's presentation, um, his uh, harrowing experiences uh, in internment in the Krakow ghetto through three Of, holds thousands of other stories like Hazan Taube's, including over a hundred who survived thanks to Oscar Schindler's famous list. Each testimony has been indexed to the minute using over 70,000 keywords, and it allows you to, and anybody throughout the world, uh, particularly scholarly work, to do research and to find the exact minute you're looking for. There are also nearly two million names that have now been indexed from these testimonies. And we recently have shared our data with Ancestry.com and JewishGen.org, making this archive a powerful family research tool 
And so what we're really trying to do is to take these uh, 55,000 testimonies and, and make them available for, uh, for the people throughout the world to really use them to research both history and to do good. In addition to the 50,000 50, Holocaust witness testimonies that are in these archives, we also contain stories from other genocides and, and crimes against humanity from Cambodia and Rwanda and current conflicts in South Sudan and the Rohingya in the Myanmar. Now, Moshe Taube, from his testimony, uh, we know that he was born Maximilian Taube on June 17, 1927. He had a traditional religious upbringing and music was always part of his life and his family's. This music appreciation naturally led to Moshe to be influenced by the uh, Krakow Cantor, which we heard before, Cantor Yussel Mantelbaum. And now we're going to listen to Hazan Taube speak about the influence in a clip of his testimony from the archive. Was music a part of your life when you were a child? Always. Always, since I was five, six years old, music was always a part of my life, always. And not only of my life, but the life of family. Music was a, a, an integral feature of everyday life, of everyday life. There was not a day without music, either from the radio or from the piano or from singing or from discussing music. Not a day went by without it. Did you learn an instrument as a child? I started to uh, play the piano, to study piano, really, with a teacher at the age of eight. This is also when I started to sing in a choir with a, with a famous cantor of Krakow, Yossele Mandelbaum, Olaf Shalom. He just died three years ago at the age of 93, 94 in Brooklyn, New York. He was the cantor in the Cypress Shul in Krakow. Cypress, C-I-P-R-E-S-S, C-Y-P-R-E-S-S, Cypress Shul on Agnieszki Street in Krakow. It was a very beautiful uh, synagogue, and he was the only one who had a streimel and a bekishi, because he was a Baba Vachosut. Yoselem Mandelbaum, Olaf Shalom. But I will never forget his, his davening, his fervor, his tremendous impact on the, on the people. When he was davening, they, uh, for example, when he said Rosh Chodesh Benjen, when he blessed the new moon, the synagogue was rocking with sobs, from, especially from the women's gallery. I remember it so distinctly. There were such tremendous sobs loud sobs from, from the women's gallery and from, from, from people, because he moved the people so tremendously. And he gave me the, the path. He showed me the path in Hazanut, in, in the Hazanut Haregish. It means the, the emotional cantoret, the emotional cantorial art. See, because there's, there are two cantorial arts. This the emotional cantorial art practiced by cantors mostly in, in Eastern Europe, and the straight the classical cantorial art practiced in Germany, France, and, and England on Western Europe. You see, so he by with his fervor, with his emotion, tremendous emotions, showed me the way to the Hazalut Haregish, to the emotional cantorial art. Was music a part of your life? Okay, we are okay. So that's the end of the uh, the clip. Um, I just would uh, like to let everybody know if and when you have access to these uh, tapes and these testimonies that the. Um, without having to go through the different levels of Zoom and communication and different distribution. It's as if you're sitting in the room with these people. I've listened to testimonies from, from family friends for hours, and it's as if I've gone back to my childhood. So to the, um, 
to the point that um, I think Lauren was making about the European Jewish history and uh, it, it it's not only comes alive, it is alive because you hear it from the actual uh, people who were there. Um, and it's an amazing, an amazing archive. And we really at the USC Shoah Foundation would like to welcome everybody on this call um, to, to hear, you know, Hazan Talbi's whole three hours of testimony and, and anyone else. Uh, this is going to be available for now until for 500 years, hopefully. We, we invite you all to just join and become part of this community and access the USC Shoah Foundation and, uh, and you know, honor, um, as we do tonight, being able to honor Hazan Talbi and every others of the survivors and those that perished. Thank you. Thank you so much, Freddie. I know I speak for uh, certainly certainly all of my colleagues here tonight, as well as most of the people who are watching that uh, I, I personally cannot wait to uh, to uh, experience all three hours of that testimony. That's uh, really looking forward to that. So thank you so much. We are now going to uh, wrap up the program this evening uh, with uh, some final remarks from uh, Hazan Stephen Storr of uh, Beth Shalom, uh, Congregation Beth Shalom in Northbrook, Illinois, who was a student of Hazan Taube. And um, he will also chant for us uh, the El Mali Rachamim. But I have to unmute him. Now he can. Thank you, Michael. And uh, good evening to uh, many people I know from Squirrel Hill. Um, my cantorial colleagues, my neighbors here, and thank you for allowing me to, to share a few words. Um, those of you who know me well know that I'm not terribly humble, but given this opportunity to talk about uh, Moshe uh, is very, very humbling. And uh, I don't wanna take issue, Rabbi Steindel, with, with your words, but um, when I was in the choir, I, I didn't get this terribly much. I did get a finger or two, but um, the thumbs up. I remember one time, the very first time uh, I had a solo opportunity. And the tenor was sick that day. And Moshe looked up to me and said, Stevie, which he was allowed to call me. Uh, Stevie, you take the solo. Now this was, I was just getting into college. I had never really studied music. I didn't read music. And, you know, I was, I was pretty good memorizing things. So I was like, okay, I can sing that. Came time for the solo in Vicare of Pizurenu. And I don't know what I sang, but it wasn't what was on the sheet music. And Moshe looked up from that pulpit that you spoke about. He looked up into the choir loft and he put two fingers up. He said, second time, I'll sing the solo. Um, so Moshe let us know when we did well and Moshe let us know when we didn't do so well, uh, but he was he was loving in everything that he did. As a young boy growing up in Squirrel Hill, and those of you who live there or have lived there uh, understand this, uh, I shul hopped a lot. You know, there's a lot of shuls in a small locale from um, Road of Shalom, which is a little bit further, to Tree of Life, to Beth Shalom, to Polite Sedet, to Shari Tara, to the Shtiblech up on Phillips Avenue and Hobart and all those different places. And you would hop uh, and go hear some rabbanim. I'd study with this rabbi for Shalashudas. I'd go to hear that rabbi. And you went for, of course, the cookies because they always had good cookies from Rosenblum's Bakery and Silberberg's. And uh, you went to hear Chazanah. And the place you really went to hear a chazan was Beth Shalom. So my father would take me there as often as he could or send me uh, during high school and college and said, Stevie, you got to learn how to daven. And that's the guy you, and my dad was a great belt filler, but he said, you really want to learn? That's where you have to go. You have to go to Beth Shalom. And so I would take lessons from Moshe. I would go to his house. He would teach me to sing and everything in the mask. He kept telling me the mask. I still don't know how to sing in the mask, but he would tell me, Stevie, Stevie, sing in the mask. And, um, and he would teach me to daven. A lot of my nusach is from him before I ended up in cantorial school. And everything was always cash too. I don't know if those of you who paid Moshe for services, but it was always cash, Moshe liked cash. And I then ended up singing in the choir. Some of the choir members are here 
tonight. And actually, I keep a very small reduction of that music, Beccaro Pizzurino, right up on my bookcase, right above my computer in my office, always reminding me not to get too, uh, too impressed with myself and to remember like Aramio Veravi, right? Remember from where you came, Steve, you weren't always a singer. Uh, and it was Moshe who ended up becoming my sponsor and sending me to cantorial school. He was the one who taught me my, my solos to, to uh, uh, interview and audition there. He was always in touch with me. He was ever so sweet and kind. And um, if not for him, I wouldn't have ended up in cantorial school. He always kept touch with me. He did that with so many people that had studied with him. I know other cantorial uh, colleagues of mine would come in from Ohio and other cities just to study with him once a month, as did, I'm sure, other opera singers from Duquesne or Chatham or Carnegie Mellon and, and other places that, that grew to adore and respect his, his great talents. Um, he called everybody sweetie. Uh, he was he was so loving. He he would walk the streets of Squirrel Hill, and some people who didn't know him well would say, "Oh, there's Tao Bay, you know, in the hat and the vest, and always so the posture always perfect." And there was oh, his nose is in the air. He was he was, you know, erudite, and and he was a prima donna. But he wasn't. He was just he was so gentle and so sweet, and always asked Stevie, Stevie, tell me, tell me, how is your mother? Tell me, how is always inquiring about another person's. Uh, good uh, goodness, wanting only goodness for them. And only a voice like his could have carried that magnificent room, that sanctuary of, of Beth Shalom in Squirrel Hill. Uh, many people have sung on it. Few people have uh, deserved to sing on it, but Moshe deserved it. He deserved all the kavod, all the grandeur, all the beauty that that synagogue and that wonderful congregation uh, had to offer somebody. Um, I'm blessed, Mr. Kotek, to have uh, done the, I think, the final interview with Moshe just a couple of weeks ago before he took ill. Uh, we were trying to do a program, a project for the Cantor's Assembly and interviewing the elders of our, um, of our membership, which I think I'm in at this point. I think it's 60 and above. But uh, Moshe, because he wasn't feeling well and he was suffering somewhat, didn't want to be on camera. He just felt a little too self um, Well, you, you fill in the word, I can't come up with the word, but he just didn't want to be seen, but he did talk to me and he was ever so clear about what helped him get through the show, what helped him get through uh, a long career. And he talked about faith and emunah in God, in God. And then of course, Helena, his wife, you know, he, oh, you need a wonderful, you know, Ezra Kinedo, you need a partner in life and you need faith in God. And um, he, he was, uh, he was just a, a beautiful, loving, loving person that uh, obviously I could talk more about, but, but th that was the, the personal man that I knew. And um, I know that we love his voice. We, we uh, imitate his voice. We'll never replicate it, but we can imitate it. That to come to Shabbat is something, I, it's like my mother's milk. To come to Shabbat. It's just, I, you know, it's just there. And I would uh, encourage all of you who don't know the, the breadth of his repertoire to, to look it up, to study it, to bring honor to his memory by singing it. And I'll ask you to stand for the male that I'm about to recite. I'm not gonna do the entire male uh, a la Moshe's uh, composition, but the first part, you'll hear a little bit of glance. He loved label a glance. And you'll hear a little bit of that in the melody. And uh, again, I'm humbled and I'm honored to offer this, if you'll stand, if you're comfortable standing only, of course, it would be respectful. <coughs> the mask, the mask. <laughs> Shochen Bameromi Amet Semenu Hanehona Taka Kanfe Ashkina Bimala Kidoshim Kidoshim Utorim 
Thank you so much, Steve. That was beautiful. I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure everybody here agrees. We have uh, we have reached the end of of this evening's program, the official end. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are still for those of you who want to stay. We do still have some audio recordings of uh, the interview that uh, Hazan Taube gave to Mark Slobin for his book Chosen Voices. So we are going to be playing an extended selection from that uh, in just a moment. But before we, before we do that, I want to, A, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight, for giving us your, of your time, and for, for helping us to pay tribute to to uh, this great Chazan's memory. And uh, I want to thank a number of people. This, this would not have happened without the combined efforts of, of many, many people. Um, most, most especially our, our contributors this evening, uh, Rabbi Steven Steindel, Lauren Bairn's father, um, uh, Freddie, Freddie Kotek, Steven Storr, uh, as, as well as uh, the, uh, the following people at the USC Shoah Foundation, Dr. Amy Carnes, Lauren Carter, Aaron Zero, Steven Smith, and Kim Simon. We want to thank you so much for everything that you did to make, uh, to make uh, it possible for us to uh, show the videotape testimony. And uh, also from the Holocaust Center of Pittsburgh, I want to thank Lauren Barron's father and Jackie Reese. And thank you so much, not just for your participation, but also for the, uh, your generous um, permission to use the photos of, uh, of Hazan Taube in our promotional materials. I also want to thank uh, Steve Stein of the Cantor's Assembly, who served as our shaliach to Dr. Mark Slobin to uh, get permission to use the audio tapes. So there were a lot, a lot of people involved. But last but not least, there's two, two people in, in particular that I want to make sure to, to thank. Joel Gluck, uh, his, Dr. Joel Gluck, he's, uh, he's also a member of the Cantor's Assembly. Um, but he he is the one who is responsible for all of the uh, the beautiful slides that uh, that we saw tonight. And Joel was doing all the things behind the scenes. And this was an incredibly uh, complex program compared to uh, most of the things that we do. And uh, Joel was right there uh, making everything happen behind the scenes. So thank you, Joel. Um, finally, um, no no uh, thank you list would be complete without thanking Robert Keeval, who who was so generous and giving of his time and his, and I have to say, of his patience, <laughs> because every day there was another wrinkle I threw, I threw at you, Robert, and uh, 
you you handled them all uh, with grace under pressure. So uh, and you didn't yell at me too much. No, there weren't that many all caps uh, text messages, just a few. But um, anyway, thank you, Robert. Um, we look forward to uh, hearing many, many more of your listening room programs in the coming year. And uh, we will be back tomorrow night with another candle lighting at 8 o'clock in the exact same place on the Cantor's Assembly Facebook page. That will be followed by our program, Cantor's on Record, which is the program that we've been running with the, uh, the Milken Foundation for the last several weeks. Uh, we've been attracting over 500 people every week for the last few weeks, and uh, it's really one of the most uh, tremendous programs that we've we've ever done, and we're we're really looking forward. We're proud of that uh, partnership that we have we have been building with them, the USC uh, Lowell Milken Center for oh they just changed their name for Music of the American Jewish Experience and the Milken Archive of American Jewish music. We are we are thrilled uh, for our partnership with them and uh, we encourage those of you who have not been able to be with us for those pro for that program yet to join us tomorrow night. So we'll be right back in the same exact place. So thank you all for coming. We're going to uh, move now to the uh, the audio testimony for those of you who want to stay. If you uh, have other things to do at, at 10 o'clock at night on the East Coast, I can't imagine what it would be, but uh, please uh, please feel free. Thank you so much for being here. While davening, he composed. And you had followed along. Piece. We followed along, and he, with, and he gave us little nigunim just to, to he, he taught us little nigunim to sing here and to sing there, uh -huh. you know. But also not nigunim, Hasidic nigunim. They were more, I would say, tefillah nigunim than Hasidic nigunim. Are those the kinds of things you hear on the Shiratos recordings, where the the come in? Yes, 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 yes. And then he comes right, in. Right, right, right. Not only Shiratos, Kvartin's yeah. recordings. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So that was, would you say that was typical of a kind of Polish um, sound uh, or the approach of that? that Hello? Hello? Okay. I can't hear me. My, uh, my Zoom crashed, but I still have, uh, I can still see you. We are now going to, uh, for those people that want to stay and listen to the, the rest of the interview, we are going to play that now. Um, this is an interview that was done in 1984 with uh, Cantor Taube and by uh, Mar Dr. Mark Slobin in preparation for his book about the American Cantorate. So those of you that have the tenacity to stay and listen to it, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, Joel, if you wanna just start it now, we'll go and I'm gonna go into Gain his computer, my wife, because she's got, she didn't crash. Okay, Joel, just let it go. John. Yes, 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 yes. says you can't hear it. Try it again. Go on.
shoes. Yeah, yeah. A shoe. Okay. You have to be careful to differentiate between a shoe and a shtil. I don't. Rise again. Well, I lost lost connection. All right, maybe Hashem is telling us something. Saying that two hours is enough for one program. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can uh, maybe so, we can, uh, fix it up, fix it up, and uh, and come back at it another time. Or we can, or we can put it on the site. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe that's enough. I think uh, I think people need to get some rest. Or eat okay, because I my 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 Zoom just quit unexpectedly, so I have I have you guys, but I have nothing else on my screen, and. Uh, so I guess Hashem is sending us a message. All right. Chag Urim Sameach to everyone. Robert, and, did, you, um, did you hear my uh, my thank you of you? I I did hear it. I was okay. I was on Gaina's computer. I was sending you messages, but you didn't look at it. So uh, oh, no, they were. I wasn't getting those. They all were right. So we. All right. We'll so, have to listen to the rest of Moshe's interview at another time. Okay. Well, maybe we can, uh, we'll, we'll find an opportunity to do that. All right, everyone, thank you for uh, sticking with us. It's, uh, it, it has been a long evening, but uh, we're, we're going to wrap things up. And uh, we will see you, if not tomorrow night, uh, then at one of our other candle lightings. And if not at those, hopefully we'll see you at another one of our, our programs in the very near future. Thanks again for joining us. Hanukkah Sameach. And uh, Shavuot Tov. And, and thank you to uh, Joel and to Mike and everyone else who helped us out this evening.